Welcome to this video tutorial on how to set up batched rendering in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be using this scene here, which currently looks like this in the rendered view, which I previously set up with lighting, materials and some atmospheric fog features here which I'm going to be rendering out. If you'd like to go back and see how this scene was created, I'll put a link in the description of this video going through the steps to create this particular view. Now, in this file I've set up a few cameras under my named views here, and to find the named views, you just need to go to View, Set View, and click on Named Views to open up this panel. Now, a new named view is created by kind of rolling around the model, locating the view that you want to create, which let's say, for this instance, is kind of this view here. And once you've got that, you can just click on the Save As button to save a new camera. I'll save this out as camera 8. Now here you can see I've got kind of eight different views set up and it might be that you want to kind of render out an image for each of these views overnight or in a period of time where you don't have to kind of click the render button each time you want to render a new view. That's where the batch rendering process comes in and it allows us to render out all of these views in one go using V-Ray's built-in kind of batch rendering engine. Now the batch rendering is found up here under the batch render panel and if we click left click on there it will open up that sort of batch render. Now it might come up with your kind of views you're ready to render but by default it will usually be clear and you'll get something that looks like this when you open up the batch render panel. Now a key thing to make sure is when you're setting up your batch render that before you add any files in we save the file here just by left clicking on the save. Once that's saved, this will then be able to read all of the views we have set up as well as any animations we have set up and add that into our batch render panel. And to add it in, we just click on this plus panel to add in our files into the batch render. Now, for this, we want to kind of make sure we're rendering out the correct views. For mine, I don't actually want these kind of viewports here, which are the kind of default view windows if I go back into my sort of standard four windows. It's detecting these kind of four windows that are set up there by default. I'm going to tick those off because all I want is the cameras, the eight kind of cameras I've set up here that I'm going to be rendering. We can also have the animation as you can see, but for this I'm going to tick off and just do my eight cameras. Now before I hit start rendering to render out those views, I want to make sure of the render settings I'm kind of rendering each of these views with. And that can be found under the V-Ray Asset Editor. I go into the settings, we can find the render settings in here. Now the way the batch render engine works is it will look at both the render output and also the quality settings I've set to determine how long to render each of these views for. So for this I've set mine at kind of 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels. We've got a one to one ratio which will be the same for all of these views that I render out and the time limit at the moment is set for 0.2 minutes. I'm going to just up that to one minute there. If you don't have a time limit set, which is kind of found by ticking this box here, it will go to this noise limit instead, which will mean it will render out the image till it hits that noise limit there, and then it will stop rendering. If you want to be a little bit more in control of the time, let's say you're kind of rendering overnight, you've got eight views, maybe you're asleep for eight hours, it might be that you want 60 minutes or an hour per view, and you can set that all in the time limit here. So I usually prefer setting the time limit when setting up these images. Let's set that to one minute there. And once we're happy with those settings, we're then gonna go back to our kind of batch renderer. Now to make sure this is actually set to those settings, it's always probably good before you just hit go, just to resave the file. And if you've changed any settings in your rendering, you just want to kind of re-add these batch views back in, just to make sure that they're accurately set from those kind of settings that I've set up there. And once we've got those and we're happy, we can then render out the view. Now essentially these kind of images, when we render them, they'll be saved to the same folder as our file is. So it will be able to detect where that file is saved and it will save the images out to this file. To start the rendering process, all we need to do is click this plus sign and it will start that rendering process, opening up your frame buffer and beginning the first image. Now this view is actually the first image I'm rendering, so you'll see it kind of loading through here and we're waiting for this image to sort of render out here under this option. You can also check the batch progress in here 
to see how many kind of cameras we're going through. So I'm going to pause the view and let it render a few out so you can see what this looks like as it runs through the process. So now we can see that I've gone through three of these cameras. They've each taken just over a minute to render. So you'll see that even though I set my time limit for a minute, sometimes the kind of loading up of each frame takes a little bit of time as well, which can add a kind of extra time to those render times. So just be aware of that when you're kind of having a lot of views that you're rendering out. And as we go through these, these are saving in my files here. So we've got each of those cameras kind of saving out as we go. And that will just continue until it hits the kind of final camera eight there and saves that out to the folder. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to use the batch rendering process within V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. And if you want to watch any other videos on rendering in V-Ray and Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.